This is 7 at 7 from the Las Vegas Review Journal. Good evening, I'm Jen Ah. Thanks for joining us on 7 at 7. Starting off with business sponsored by Bank of Nevada, Bank on Accountability. Elvis impersonators are now fearing loss of work in a legal dispute. Review Journal's entertainment columnist John Katsimidis weighs in. Elvis impressionists in Las Vegas are concerned they might lose a lot of work if Authentic Brands Group follows through on its threat to seek legal action against chapels in Las Vegas that provide Elvis-themed wedding ceremonies. Jesse Garon, who works for the city of Las Vegas, he says, I wouldn't know what I would do, and there are a lot of tribute artists in Las Vegas who are saying the same thing. We'll wait and see how this shakes out, but right now, we have a lot of Elvis impressionists who are nervous in Las Vegas. In more top stories, sponsored by Nevada Hand Silver Sky Assisted Living Community. Learn more at nevadahand.org. The Clark County Coroner's Office IDs the teen boy killed in a dirt bike crash in northwest Las Vegas over the weekend. Police say 16-year-old Jackson Halverson was driving north on Sky Canyon Park Drive around 3 in the afternoon Saturday. Halverson ran a red light at Iron Mountain Road, then collided with an SUV and died at the scene. In politics, a Democratic campaign chief maintains Nevada seats will stay blue despite some headwinds. Meanwhile, the National Republican Congressional Committee says otherwise, citing economic problems and skyrocketing cost of living. The national landscape for Democrats is pretty, pretty tough, and it's no different than in Nevada. Um, inflation, Biden's poor uh, approval rates. In Nevada, we have three Democrats who are seeking office, seeking re-election. Yesterday, uh, Sean Patrick Maloney, who's the chair of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, said he expects those Democrats or Democrats in those offices after the primaries to win, to win and hold those seats. He cites the upcoming ruling of Roe versus Wade and the recent mass shootings, but admits Democrats are the underdogs. With early voting underway, Governor Steve Sisolak and Senator Jackie Rosen voice their support for Lieutenant Governor Lisa Cano Burkhead. She understands what kids go through in school, what educators go through. She represents the best of what Nevada has to offer. The vision, the heart, the determination. It's about rallying people and getting them to the polls to go out and to vote. It's about showing that representation matters. Early voting numbers indicate Republicans have a slight lead over Democrats, 5,700 versus 5,000. Clark County reports only 12,000 cast their votes during the first three days, less than 1% of the voter pool. However, officials say that doesn't include mail-in ballots, a large chunk of total votes. In Health, sponsored by Boulder City Hospital, we're here for you when you need us. A lab's COVID-19 testing is under scrutiny after a Nevada health official says its data was terribly wrong. Review Journal's Renee Semmerauer has more on North Shore's PCR tests in Las Vegas. Yeah, skeptical that North Shore Clinical Lab's COVID-19 testing operations were providing accurate results. A university official sent specimen to both the Chicago lab and the Nevada State Public Health Laboratory and found that North Shore's PCR testing had missed 96% of positive cases. North Shore conducted most of its testing in northern Nevada, but expanded into Las Vegas and Henderson in January and February. Officials say they didn't want to fix the problem and therefore had no business doing PCR testing. Potentially thousands of Nevadans received incorrect test results that potentially thousands of people were told that they were negative for the virus when in fact they were positive for the virus. In December, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services cited that North Shore Lab in Chicago for deficiencies that put the public in, quote, immediate jeopardy. Neither state, local or federal officials informed residents of the possible inaccurate results. In weather, sponsored by Star Nursery, your garden's partner for every blooming thing. After a hot day, we're looking at temps still in the 90s, set to dip into the 80s in the next hour, then 70s overnight. A clear and calm night. On Thursday, more sunny skies, light winds, and sizzling high of 101 and low of 75 degrees. 
Similar weather on Friday. Come Saturday, partly cloudy skies, highs sink into the 90s with the winds picking up. The forecast now shows triple digit highs for Sunday and the blazing heat is here to stay. In Lifestyle, sponsored by Visit Laughlin, an easygoing getaway filled with good food, good people and good times on the river. Can you guess which Nevada city ranked fifth for highest population growth in the nation? None other than North Las Vegas, with a population increase of more than 9,900 since 2020. There's also a growing number of warehouses being built there. Plus, still looking for a vacation destination? How about staying in Vegas? Wallet Hub ranks Las Vegas as sixth best place for a staycation, thanks to its number of spas, zoos, aquariums, nightlife, and ice cream shops per capita. Ranked in the top three are Honolulu, Orlando, and Chicago. Sports brought to you by Station Casino's STN Sports. Download the app today. It is officially June 1st and the Raiders will have a bit more money in their piggy bank after Wednesday. It is reported that the Raiders will get just under $20 million in salary cap room from the releases of linebacker Corey Littleton and defensive end Carl Nassib. With those cuts, the Raiders will have a total of $25 million in salary cap space to add or sign some key players. One option the Raiders have is to sign wide receiver Hunter Renfro to a contract extension. The 2021 Pro Bowler is eligible for a new contract and is set to become a free agent next year. Tight end Darren Waller is also a top candidate for a contract extension, and he's set to make an average of $7 million in each of the next two seasons with no guaranteed money left in the remainder of his contract. Sports betting sponsored by Las Vegas Paiute Tribal Smoke and Cigar Shop. John Rahm is the 9-1 to favorite at the Westgate Superbook to win the PGA Tours Memorial Tournament, which tees off Thursday at Muirfield Village in Ohio. Rory McIlroy is the 12 to one second choice, followed by Patrick Cantley at 16 to one, Xander Schauffele at 18 to one, and Jordan Spieth, Cameron Smith, and Las Vegas resident Colin Morikawa at 22 to one. In entertainment, it looks like folks aren't really into artificial intelligence for entertainment here in Vegas. Whitney Houston's hologram show shuts down after just eight months. Producers didn't specify why, but when a major production abruptly closes on the strip, it's usually due to substandard ticket sales. The producers state they plan to enhance production and return in 2023. Thank you for watching 7 at 7. If you're watching from YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to the Review Journal's YouTube channel for more great content. Watch Las Vegas Breaking News streaming live on your OTT device. We'll see you tomorrow for more 7 at 7. Review Journal Studio, sponsored by Adam Kuttner. Get the maximum settlement as quickly as possible. This 7 at 7 update, sponsored by Pro Group Management. You're watching 7 at 7 from the Las Vegas Review Journal.